guys, you guys um, were picked to open for the Beatles in 1966 on the Beatles' uh, final tour of the United States. Yeah, some somebody picked us, <laughs> <laughs> but we did get to travel with them for uh, almost three weeks on the charter plane and and uh, open every every night for them, mostly in baseball baseball stadiums. Yeah, and um, it was an un unforgettable experience. We we got a chance t to uh, hang out with them and talk with them some, and and um, they were really, uh, you know, they were great people, great people. They were a lot like they are in the movie, um, Hard Day's Night. You know, amazing things. Uh, some dreams come true for me, you know, uh, in my life. I got a chance to uh, meet the Beatles and hang out with them and and play with the remains. I just wanted to mention Bobby had pa passed away a couple of weeks ago and I know you guys played with him and you backed him up. Uh, right. yeah. yeah. He was a he was a wonderful very nice man and was uh, always very kind and and very patient and good-natured and uh, a nicer guy you wouldn't have want to want want to meet, you know. You couldn't meet. And I did get a chance to see him in Nashville about five years ago. I ran into him, and we always meant to get together to, you know, have lunch together or something, but, but it never happened, so. Yeah. I know, I heard like 700 people covered Sonny. I mean, it was a, that's, that was an amazing song. And then you guys all, you, when you played with the Beatles, you also backed up the Ronettes, too? You played, I mean, back up with them? Yeah, yeah. I was on stage about 75 minutes a night. And the Beatles did 30 minutes. 30? Wow. Yeah. So, of course, I got paid more than they did. <laughs> <laughs> and you were a book ticket to Rye, which was... I've talked to people here. They said, that's the most amazing book. It just... so a picture, is, it's like a diary. It just They said, it's so, so amazing. Well, I had a lot of help uh, putting that together. Uh, my wife, Holly, helped me organize it. it. It goes day by day through the, the Beatles tour and includes a a little journal that I was keeping at the time, writing something down each day uh, about what was going on that day on the tour. And um, so with that, I was able to frame, um, use it as a framework for, for the book. And we added uh, photographs and newspaper reviews and fan recollections and memorabilia. And uh, it, it makes for a pretty um, uh, entertaining book. Yeah, considering it was the la absolutely the last tour and everything, and uh, I mean that's just uh, who, I mean how many people can say they've toured with the Beatles? After that, I know that um, you you worked with Graham Parsons and you you did a couple albums with him and other people. Uh, you, did, you worked on Graham Parsons' first debut al debut album. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that album was it was called GP, and uh, I got to play on that record and sing on it, and and uh, went out to Hollywood and and. Played essentially with Elvis's band, you oh. know, with James Burton on guitar and oh, and wow. uh, Glenn D. Harden on piano, Ronnie Tutt on drums, and it was that was an interesting experience too. I'm I'm real glad to have spent time with Graham. I knew him a little bit in Boston yeah, and New oh, York, yeah. So that's how he called me up, and you know he knew the remains, and and uh, is uh, sad. Because he was a real victim, I think, of, of addictions. And yeah. In those days, in six, the, the early 70s, even, um, it wasn't addiction wasn't approached uh, as openly as it no, is I today. Know. You know, with a lot of people going to rehab and stuff, um, the way it is today with programs and all. Uh, but he definitely, uh, I look at him as a victim of that. But he he was a great uh, songwriter and a very spiritual man in his own way. And then you worked with uh, Amy Lou Harris for like uh, you did for ten years or so. I mean, it's amazing. I know it's amazing. Another one got to do that and sing with Amy Lou and play guitar and and make a bunch of records with her and travel the world. And um, uh, but you know today I'm having more fun than I've ever had because I'm um, I'm getting to travel around with my wife Holly and we have our trio. Uh, today, Barry and Holly Tashin with our bass player, our friend Dimitri Lefthrakis, who's a Boston area player, and uh, we just we just love playing the acoustic music, and, and uh, hope the folks enjoy it, I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, 
Now you'll, what's your latest CD now that you're releasing? Um, it's called Long Story Short, and uh, it's about a, been out for about a year. And it's got a nice little band on it. Some of our good friends in Nashville played with us, and uh, we wrote about most of the songs on it. We just uh, enjoy ourselves playing these days, and we have a lot of musical friends. And music is one of the greatest gifts we have. And I think it does more people more good than many people rec recognize or realize, you know. It's truly an honor to, to meet you, and uh, I really appreciate thanks for you. Thanks for the time, and uh, we're looking forward to the show. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Uh, a it's a here. beautiful to Barry afternoon. Barry and Holly Tashian. Yeah, give them a big hand. Everybody. It's good to be here. Hi, Sandy. And your husband? No. This is our first time in Hampstead, New Hampshire. We are going fishing in the sea of love. Sea 
of heartbreak song that we wrote just recently and um, this one you know Barry and I have realized that we um, have been playing together for 40 years which is a darn Yay. long time <laughs> darn, yeah. darn long and uh, music is such a great gift it's yeah. just um, you know it's, it's 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 done more good uh, then probably a lot of people realize, don't you think? <laughs> Y'all like music? Yeah, they wouldn't be here if they weren't, didn't they? <laughs> um, I, I use the word y'all because I've been living, we've been living in Nashville for 30 years now. Uh, but we're from Connecticut originally. So, um, so it's nice to be able to get back up to um, the old stomping grounds. We used to go out to the Isles of Shoals a lot when we were younger. Yeah. Star Island. So this is called um, We Don't Give Up on Love. And it's in, on our new album, Long Story Short. And it is the truth. And, um, we do have, well, we have a new album, but it got, it got into my luggage, which stayed um, somewhere else for a long time. I arrived and it didn't, so there you go. But we have other albums. We don't give up on love. Right. That's because we 
very much. Uh, and uh, there uh, was a great uh, uh, brother duet uh, team from Alabama in the late 40s and through the 50s uh, called uh, the Leuven Brothers. And we'd like to do one of their songs. A very great song called uh, My Baby's Gone. Miss called... Holly, can I sing another I one? am, I am. I can't wait to sing it. This is a swing number, isn't it? It is. It's called The Darkness on the Delta. It's a nice oh. time for this. This is probably written in 1929, about there. Okay. darkness 
on the Delta Let me linger in the shelter of the night a special song, um, Dawn Clay. Are you here, Dawn? There she is. Dawn and Clay. Dawn and Clay. I mean, Dawn, Dawn Shaw and Clay. <laughs> you probably get called that all kinds of things. These are our host and They're hostess. Not, they are doing such a fabulous us. job at making us feel very welcome and comfortable and well-fed and taken care of. Thank you, Clay. Dawn. Let's have a big hand. Yeah, for, let's do uh, that. The whole committee and all the... Uh, Jack Fabulous and, and our sound the volunteers. Here, David. Thank you. And David. Wonderful job. And for yourselves coming out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> out of your air conditioning. Yes. Uh, into the real air conditioning. So um, this one is for you, Dawn. Well, all I want is a hearty dog to come along. Come along and be my party doll. Come along and be my party doll. Come along and be my party doll. And I'll make love to you, to you. And I'll make love to you. Be ever loving, true and 
dark now. <laughs> well, when I was uh, singing with Emmylou Harris, we had a night off in Louisville one night. That's the way they say it down there, Louisville. And uh, the same night, Merle Haggard had a night off in Louisville. And he invited us over to his hotel to party down. So I still remember taking that yellow cab across the Ohio River to New Albany, Indiana, to the Holiday Inn there, going up to room number 216 and knocking on the door. That were me knocking. The door flew open. That was a door opening. There was Merle Haggard with his guitar. He said, come on in. So Emmy Lou and I and a couple other fellows in the band went in and we sat down and it was incredible. He had his guitar and he sang to us for two hours. I tell you what, he sang this song. I loved it when he sang it. I want to sing it for you. I hope you like it. It's called Watermelon Time in Georgia. Country blues goes like this. Fifties on a 78 RPM Boogie Woogie. Atlantic record at Rick Del Vecchio's house. Uh, it was um, by Joe Turner. It was the flip side of his big hit, Corina Corina. Anybody remember that? Yeah. All right. Well, this was on the other side of it. It's the Boogie Woogie Country Girl. We put it on our latest and greatest. But you're up here. i 
One for you. It's uh, called the Gray Funnel Line, and a lot of people like to sing this song. It's um, <clears throat> written by Cyril Tawney, who's an Englishman. And the Gray Funnel Line is the um, Navy ship in the, those funnel, the big stacks of the British, the British um, Navy, um, the big stacks. You know, the funnels are the Gray Funnels. And this is a guy who wishes he wasn't on the Gray Funnel Line, but back home with his sweetheart. Um, we learned it from couple of English singers, uh, Maddie Pryor and June Tabor, who do a wonderful Irish singers, wonderful job. And um, the, silly the Silly Sisters. And we, we, we sang it for years like they did, and then one day, one day, the bluegrass bug kind of bit us, and we said, what happens if we do it bluegrass style? And so this is what happens. <laughs> Great fun alive. Don't mind the rain or the rolling sea. The weary night never worries me. But the hardest time in a sailor's day is to watch the sun as it dies away. On the gray funnel line, the finest ship that sailed the sea is still a prison for the likes of me. But give me wings like Noah's dove, I'd fly up Harvard. 
All right. Now we got a Hank Williams song. We got any Hank Williams fans out there? Okay. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hank was a good singer and a good writer and a great performer. I just was down at the Country Music Hall of Fame recently, and I got to see uh, Hank's suit. He, they have a model of him, and I tell you, that was one small, skinny guy. He was like my size. I mean, a little taller, but wow, he was little. But he could sing. This is one that. This is one of his more rare songs. Where actually, it's a. It's not that so uh, lonesome, sad song, but. Uh, it's a happier song called Baby, We're Really in Love. Well, Lord, I hope this day is good. Don Williams is uh, just coming out of retirement to do a couple of concerts in Nashville um, in October. We're very excited about that. We've seen him perform a couple of times, and he's just fabulous. Don Williams, are, are there big Don Williams fans out there? Yes. Hey. Oh, yeah.
want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Beautiful New Hampshire evening here in Hampstead. Mercy. I'd like to remind you we have a little uh, record boutique down here in the dark in this corner on the table. We can get to know each other real well. concert series you have here, free concerts in the park. It's a wonderful thing. You should be very proud of having it in your town.